Hi, welcome to a world of online learning with OET Online Classroom. Today, we are going to practice on OET Reading Part A. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe for more classes on OET Reading, Listening, Writing and Speaking. Today's video is about Reading Part A in OET. As we all know, most of the students find reading to be the most difficult module. This video will help you understand part A of reading. This video includes explanation for the answers so that you can try practicing right away. The two most important things that students should remember is that OET reading part A has to be completed within 15 minutes. In part A, you locate specific information from four short texts related to a single healthcare topic. As you all know, Time is the most important aspect of the session of reading. So now, let us look at a sample reading part A. These are the four short texts from which we will be looking for the answers. This text is about use of feeding tubes in pediatrics. Here you can see text A and it is about pediatric nasogastric tube use. Now you have 30 seconds to read this text before we move on to the other three texts. Please skim read, understand the content of paragraph as it will be helpful to answer questions in part A. Now you have text B. As we can see, this is about inserting the nasogastric tube. Now you have another 30 seconds to read this text before we move on to text C and D. This is text C. We can see that in this text, we have a flowchart which contains a step-by-step -step process for the use of nasogastric tube. Now you have another 30 seconds to skim through the content. And now we have text D and it is about administering feeds and fluids via feeding tube. Now you have 30 seconds before we look at questions. Before we go to the questions, let us read and understand the instructions one by one. These are the instructions for part A that you will find in your question paper and I will read it for you. Part A, the time limit is 15 minutes. Look at the four text A to D in the separate text booklet. For each question 1 to 20, look through the text A to D in order to find the relevant information. Write your answers on the spaces provided in this question paper. Answer all the questions within the 15 minute time limit. Your answers should be correctly spelled. Now, let us look at question number 1 to 7. For each question 1 to 7, decide which text A, B, C or D the information comes from. 
you may use any letter more than once. That means you have to find out in which of the four texts you will find the following information. I will read the questions one by one for you. In which text can you find the information about the risk of feeding a child via a gasonastric tube? And the second question is calculating the length of tube that will be required for a patient. And the third question is when alternative forms of feeding may be more appropriate than nasogastric. And the fourth question is who to consult over a, a patient's liquid food requirements. And the fifth question is about the outward appearance of the tubes. And the sixth one is knowing when it is safe to go ahead with the use of a tube for feeding. And the seventh one is how regularly different kinds of tubes need replacing. Now let us look at the answer. The information in question number one can be found in text A and the second question in text B, the third one in text A, the fourth question in text D, the fifth one in B and the sixth one C and seven B. Now let us look at the explanations. The question number one was about the risk of feeding a child via a nasogastric tube. This information is in text A. These are the issues associated with feeding a child via nasogastric tube. Question 2 was about calculating the length of the tube. This information is in text B. And here you have the information. Question 3 was to find out when alternative forms of feeding may be appropriate than nasogastric. And the answer is in text A. Question 4 was who to consult over a patient's liquid food requirements and the answer is in text D. Question number 5 was in which paragraph do you have information about the outward appearance of the tubes and it is in text B. Sixth question was when it is safe to go ahead with the use of a tube for feeding and it is in text C. And the last question was how regularly different kinds of tubes need replacing and it is in text B. Now let us look at question number 8 to 15. In this question you have to write the answers for the questions asked with a word or a short phrase from one of the text. Each answer may include words, numbers or both. Now I will read the questions for you. Question number 8. What type of tube should you use for patients who need nasogastric feeding for an extended period? Question number 9. What should you apply to a feeding tube to make it easier to insert? Question number 10. What should you use to keep the tube in place temporarily? Question number 11. What equipment should you use initially to aspirate a feeding tube? Question number 12. If initial aspiration of the feeding tube is unsuccessful, how long should you wait before trying again? Question number 13. How should you position a patient during a second attempt to obtain aspirate? Question number 14. If aspirate exceeds pH 5.5, where should you take the patient to confirm the position of the tube? Question number 15. What device allows for the delivery of feeds via the small bowel? Now, let us look at the answers.
Now, let us look at the explanations. Question number 8 was, what type of tube should you use for patients who need nasogastric feeding for an extended period? And the answer is in text B. Question number 9. What should you apply to a feeding tube to make it easier to insert? And the answer is in text B. Question number 10. What should you use to keep the tube in place temporarily? And that is also in text B. Question number 11. What equipment should you use initially to aspirate a feeding tube? And the answer is in text C. Question number 12. If initial aspiration of the feeding tube is unsuccessful, how long should you wait before trying again? And that is also in text C. Question number 13. How should you position a patient during a second attempt to obtain aspirate? Once again, that is also in text C. Question number 14. If aspirate exceeds pH 5.5, where should you take the patient to confirm the position of the tube? And the answer is in text C. Question number 15. What device allows for the delivery of feeds via the small bowel? And the answer is in text D. Now, let us look at question 16 to 20. Complete each of the sentences 16 to 20 with a word or short phrase from one of the texts. Each answer may include words, numbers or both. Question number 16. If a feeding tube isn't straight, when you unwrap, you should dash it. Question number 17. Patients are more likely to experience dash if they need long-term feeding via a tube. Question number 18. If you need to give the patient a standard liquid feed, the tube, tube to use is dash in size. Question number 19. You must take out the feeding tube at once if the patient is coughing badly or is experiencing dash. Question number 20. If a child is receiving dash via a feeding tube, you should replace the feed bottle after 4 hours. Now, let us look at the answers. Now, let us quickly go through the explanations. Question number 16 was, if a feeding tube isn't straight, when you unwrap it, you should dash it. And the answer is in text B. Question number 70. Patients are more likely to experience dash if they need long-term feeding via a tube. And the answer is in text A. Question number 18. If you need to give the patient a standard liquid feed, 
The tube to use is dash in size and the answer is in text P. Question number 19. You must take out the feeding tube at once if the patient is coughing badly or is experiencing dash and the answer is in text P. And the last question of part A is if a child is receiving dash via a feeding tube, you should replace the feed bottle after 4 hours and the answer is in text D. Hope this video has helped you to understand OET reading part A. Classes for part B and C will be released soon. The link to this textbook is included in the description below. If you have not subscribed yet, please like, share and subscribe to this YouTube channel to prepare OET from home. And we will be releasing a new video class every week. Thank you.